So today, I'm going to show you how to downgrade from Windows 11 back to Windows 10, even if you've missed the 10-day downgrade window. And we're going to do this without losing your programs and data. Stay tuned. Is your copy of Windows 10 unactivated? Well, it doesn't have to be because with today's sponsor, VIP SCD Key, you can get a valid Windows 10 license for under $20. Stop dealing with that stupid watermark on the desktop, the valid license for Windows 10. Also, with an activated copy of Windows 10, you can upgrade to Windows 11 for free. Just go to the link in the description below and pick up a valid Windows 10 license key. During checkout, use the code CYBERCPU for a 25% discount. Once you have your key, go to your activation settings in Windows 10 and click on the link that says Change Product Key. Enter the product key you just purchased and hit Activate. Now you don't have to deal with that stupid watermark that come with running an unactivated copy of Windows 10. Now, on with the video. So I got a comment in a video a while back asking if I could show how to downgrade back to Windows 10 without losing data. Unfortunately, I don't remember who asked the question and I don't even think I responded to it. But if you're the one who asked that question, then here's your video. Windows 11 comes with a 10 day window that allows you to downgrade back to your previous operating system. However, if you wait after that 10 days, the only option you have is to completely reload your computer, losing all of your data and programs. And furthermore, in my testing, I've had several instances where even within the 10 day window, you, this download simply failed. Also, many of you guys may not have upgraded to Windows 11 in the first place. Windows 11 may have simply been what came on your computer and that's what you got. Did you know that an activated copy of Windows 11 will also allow you to install Windows 10? Unfortunately, to do so requires you to completely reinstall your computer, losing all of your data and programs. So, what are you left to do if you just can't handle Windows 11 and you want to go back to Windows 10? Well, you pretty much have to start over. You have to back up all of your data, reinstall Windows 10 with a fresh copy, and then restore all of your data from your backups. And then spend the next several weeks reinstalling programs and setting them back up the way you like them. Now, you know, this is a really painful task. Many people have just decided not to do it because of the work involved. And you know, I get it. I've been there countless times. It's not fun. However, it doesn't have to be a painful task. I have found two different ways to do this where you can save a ton of time. The first way I'm going to show you in this video, and it takes the least amount of work, but unfortunately, it's not free. In the following video, I'm going to show you a free way to do it that takes a little bit more work, but should give you similar results. Before we get started, I just want to warn you to watch this video all the way through to the end before you try following this method. This isn't just an automated process and it requires several things done in order to have the outcome that you want. I also recommend completely backing up your system just in case something goes wrong. In fact, one of the things that you need in order to follow this guide is an external hard drive. So I'm gonna show you what folders you need to back up while we're following this method. So, let's get this external drive plugged in and get to it. So here we are in Windows 11, and sorry about my voice, I'm struggling from the flu right now, but I should be able to get through this. Hopefully my voice doesn't bother you too much. So what you're gonna need for this guide is a program called Ezos To Do PC Trans. And this essentially, this program is meant to be able to transfer all your data and programs from one computer to another. But we're gonna use it in a slightly different way. What we're gonna be doing is making a backup of all of our data and programs to an external drive, and then we're gonna restore that to Windows 10 once we reload Windows 10. So to get started, the first thing that we need to do is go ahead and download and install this program. And you do that simply by going to their website. I have it right here. You go down here and go ahead and download the program. Now, they have a free version, but it's only good for two gigs of data with five programs. And honestly, that's not gonna be enough. You're gonna have to upgrade to the pro version, unfortunately. And I have a coupon code for the pro version, so stay tuned to the end of the video, and I'll talk more about that. But go ahead and get this program installed, and then once you get this installed, we can go ahead and move on with this method. So I'm gonna fire the program up here, go ahead and hit yes to the user account control, 
And then once this fires up, you're going to be faced with this screen right here. And now what we want is the PC to PC isn't going to work. I mean, I mean, it will work if you're transferring it from one PC to another, but we're wanting to downgrade this system. So we're going to want to go to backup and restore. So we click on backup and restore and we go ahead and hit start. And then from here, we go ahead and hit next. And then from there, we want to name our backup. So I'm just going to name mine downgrade and then go ahead and hit the confirm button right here. The backup location will tell you it'll automatically pick any external drive that you have. But if it picks the wrong drive letter, then go ahead and click the browse button and choose a, the drive that you want to back up to. And once you do that, go ahead and hit confirm. And at this point, you get to pick which applications you actually want to back up. Now, this program only supports certain applications. Unfortunately, it will list all the ones that are unsupported. And in this case, it's just graphics drivers and audio drivers. It's not important. So at this point, you want to make sure to make note of the applications that the program doesn't support because you're going to need to back those applications up manually or it may not even be necessary. If it's stuff like games that you installed from Steam, then I wouldn't even worry about it because you're probably gonna reinstall those from Steam anyway. And Steam typically saves your save files to the cloud, so you don't have to worry too much about it. So just make sure to make note of the programs and if there's anything critical in there, make sure to back that up manually. Okay, so once we go through the supported programs, what you can do is if you click on the little box at the top right here, it'll select everything. And that's what I'm gonna do. The only thing I'm gonna unselect is OBS. And that's because I'm screen recording this with OBS right now, so I don't wanna mess with OBS. So I'm gonna leave that one unchecked. And then from there, you wanna click on files. And this gives you the opportunity to back up any files on your computer manually. And I'm actually gonna do that. So if we go to drive C, if you followed some of my other guides in the past, you know that I've created a cyber CPU folder in my root drive for certain programs. Like I've got fan control and open RGB and things of that nature in this. And I might want to back those up and move those back to Windows 10. So I'm going to go ahead and check that and it'll go ahead and add those to the backup. And then from there, you want to click on accounts. Now, if you have several different accounts on your computer, you can back up and restore those accounts with this program. That's one of the reasons why this program makes this whole migration really easy. So go ahead and check the accounts that you want to transfer. So I'm going to check mine and then go ahead and enter your password in for that account. And this is really important. In my case, I don't have a password because this is just a test install of Windows. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. But in your case, go ahead and enter the password. And then at this point, all you do is hit the backup button. So it's going to take a little bit to back up, and that's all going to be dependent on how much data and programs you have on your computer. You probably have a lot more than me because this is just a test system, so there's not much on it. But if you have a lot, this is going to take quite a while. So go ahead, get yourself a cup of coffee, sit back and let it finish up, and I'll meet you back in Windows when this is finished, and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so the backup in Isus PC Trans is done. And so now the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and hit okay to close this. And we can close this program, we're done with this now. But one thing that I would recommend doing is backing your system up just in case something goes wrong. And to do that, just go ahead and open up a file explorer window and we're gonna use the same hard drive that we were using before, which is gonna be our external disk right here. And we open that up and this is gonna be our backup image right here. This is from the program Isus PC Trans. But what we wanna do is go ahead and create another folder, just call it backup. And then in this folder, we're gonna back up some files real quick. And to do that, we're gonna open up another file explorer window and then from this file explorer window, I want you to go to this PC and go into your C drive. And then at this point, go ahead and back up anything that you think is important from your root directory. Like before, how I mentioned that I back, backed up the cyber CPU folder. So just go ahead and back up any folders that you have in your root drive that you think might be important. And then once you do that, go into the user folder. And the two folders that you're going to want to copy is your, your specific profile folder as well as the public folder. And if you have more than one profile, then you're gonna have to back all those up too. So we're gonna take these and we're gonna copy them over. And it's gonna take a minute to copy them, but go ahead and hit continue because you may need administrator permissions to do this. And then once you do that, it's gonna go ahead and copy that. 
So it's gonna take a little bit for you to do a manual backup, but I highly recommend taking the time to do this. Go ahead and just take the time to make a manual backup. If anything goes wrong, you're gonna thank me for that in the end. But during this process, since you're copying your user profile while the computer is booted, there may be some errors. And if that happens, just go ahead and tell it to skip those files. You know, you're gonna lose a couple, but most of those are unnecessary for the backup. They're usually setting files or things for programs that are happen to be opened at the time. If you want to be really thorough, you can boot the system offline through like a Linux distribution or something like that and copy your user profile that way. And I don't necessarily not recommend that because you know, you could get a more thorough backup that way, but that's not the way I'm gonna do it in this video. But if you want to, you can always boot from an external operating system like Linux or Windows PE or something like that to do a more thorough backup if you want to. But once this backup is finished, I'm gonna go ahead and jump back on and we'll continue on. Okay, so this is a really good example of some of the errors that you might get. And essentially, it just says that the file can't be copied. And this one is ClipChamp. You know, honestly, I really don't care. What I recommend doing is just say, do this for all current items, and then just hit skip, and just let it go through. It's gonna skip some files, but for the most part, those files aren't necessarily going to be that important to your backup. But they might be. That's why it might be a good idea to do an offline backup if you want. But I'll go more into that in a later video. So this is gonna take a little while to finish up. So once it finishes, I'll meet you back here in Windows. Okay, so the backup's finished. Now we're pretty much done with Windows 11 at this point. And now comes the fun part. Okay, so once you get your system backed up and you get this program ran with all of your programs themselves backed up, this is where things get interesting. Now it's time to reload the operating system that you wanna go back to. In this case, we're gonna be reloading Windows 10. However, I've already done that on another hard drive, and if you wanna do it that way, that's perfectly acceptable also. You can also get yourself another SSD to load your copy of Windows on to get everything set up prior to taking the old one out. But if you don't have an extra drive or you can't afford to get an extra drive, you can always just reformat the drive that you have and reload Windows on it. Hopefully you've got a really solid backup so that when you start Windows 10, you won't lose anything. But if you need to, like I said, you can always get another hard drive. That's the way I'm doing it, just because I need to repeat this process several times in order to make the video. So I did it this way myself. So I'm gonna go ahead, switch this drive out, and then get to setting up Windows 10 the same way Windows 11 was set up. Let's get to it. All right, we're in a completely bone stock install of Windows 10 now. So your system should be completely reloaded and ready to accept the restore from the backup that we did before. Now the only programs that I have installed on here is OBS Studio, obviously so I can do the screen capture, and Isus PC Trans, the program that we're actually using to do this migration right here in the first place. I have my external drive plugged into the system and ready to go. And all we have to do is open this program right here. I'm gonna go ahead and say yes to the user account control. And then once this fires up, we should be able to restore our data. So just like before, we wanna to go to backup and restore. And then from this point, go ahead and hit the start button. And then the only difference is, is now instead of doing the data backup, we wanna do the data restore. So we're gonna click on the restore tab here and go ahead and hit next. And then from here, it's gonna look in your external drive and it's gonna find the backup that we did before. So all you gotta do is go down and click the restore button right here and it'll give you kind of an overall rundown of what it's gonna be restoring. So these are all the programs that it's restoring, and then this is the programs that are currently existing on the computer that it's going to update. And obviously these are just the basic Windows programs, so Edge and things like that. And then these are the programs that were transferred from the other install of Windows 11. And then at this point, on the files, same thing we wanna go through, and we wanna pick the folder that we, backed up before. So we're gonna go ahead and check that and it's gonna restore that to the same place. And then we're gonna click on accounts and it's gonna ask us which accounts we want to restore. So go ahead and check all the accounts that apply for you. And once we check on that, it should restore that account back to the way it was before. And then at this point, you just hit the restore button and it should go along with the restore. So I'm gonna do that right now. So this is gonna take a minute to complete, so just sit back and wait. And just like before, if you have a lot of data and programs that it's restoring, it's gonna take more time. So get yourself comfortable and wait for it to finish. And then once mine's done, I'll meet you back in Windows. 
Okay, so once we're back in Windows, here's what we're left with. We can go ahead and close this setting right here. It does give you the option to be able to change the theme if you want to once you start up. Because as you can see, we actually have the Windows 11 theme in Windows 10, which is kind of funny. But once it's finished, you can go ahead and scroll through its logs right here just to make sure everything happened like it was supposed to. And for whatever reason, if any of your data isn't there like it should be, like then all you have to do is just go over to the backup that we did before in your local drive, go in into your external drive, and then go into the backup folder, and then you can back up your different files and stuff from right here, just in case something didn't happen like it was supposed to. You may have issues with your public folders. If you're ever using like QuickBooks or something like that, a lot of times your QuickBooks data file is in your public documents folder instead of your regular documents folder. So that's one of the reasons why I told you to manually back up at the beginning just in case you don't want to lose those kind of things but once you're finished all your applications should be installed and ready to go like for instance I'm gonna go through now and I'm gonna find Chrome here on the list because it should be installed So I screwed up and forgot to tell the program to restore my applications. So I'm doing that now. So once it's done, we'll, we'll finish up here in a minute. Okay, so now we're at this screen again. We can go ahead and close the program. It's going to want you to restart your computer once you restore all your applications, but that makes sense. I'm going to hit later. I'm going to see if I can get away with not doing that. So we're going to go ahead and close the program right now, and we should be able to. There we go. There's Google Chrome. So if we open up Chrome, you can see that all of my shortcuts that I had before are back to the way they were before. So this right here took all the settings from Windows 11 and brought it back. And this should happen with all the different programs that you use. So what you're left with is Windows 10 with all the programs and data that you had prior in Windows 11. So that program worked pretty good, but unfortunately, in order to use that program, you have to buy the pro version. The website claims that there's a free version, but even with my test system having very little data and programs on it, they still required me to upgrade. According to the documentation, the free version will only allow you to transfer like two gigs of data and five programs. I guess this is enough to test the program to see how it works, but it's completely worthless if you want to use this program for its intended purpose. So to follow this guide, you'll definitely need the pro version, but unfortunately it costs $70. So before filming this video, I contacted Isus to see if I could get a discount code for you guys. They originally offered me a commission, but I declined the commission in hopes that I could get you guys a better deal. So, for my viewers, they have given us a 50% discount when you use the code CYBERCPU at checkout. So, you can follow this method for 35 bucks, which, honestly, isn't a bad deal. So, follow the link in the description below and use the code CYBERCPU for a 50% discount. However, if 35 bucks is still too much for you, then stay tuned for next week's video and I'll show you a free alternative. The free method is definitely not as thorough as this method was and takes a lot more work, but can definitely be done. Like I said at the beginning of the video though, regardless of which method you use, I would highly recommend completely backing up your system before trying either of these methods. Now, I haven't done a video in a while on how to do a backup on your computer. So the video that I have is pretty old and kind of cringy. It was made back when I really wasn't that great at making videos. However, the information in that video is still very current. So I'll go ahead and pin that video here. If you'd like to see an updated version of that backup video, then just make sure you mention it in the comments below and maybe I'll put something together. But as always, you guys have a great day.